Now that we've started a conversation about the difference between a service dog and a pet and how important it is to keep your pets from walking up to working service dogs, let's talk about what you can actually do about this issue. Of course, the bare minimum is making sure that your pets are on a short enough leash that they're not able to approach a service dog. But what about public access? This is Lucifer, my cardiac alert dog. He alerts by grabbing his bringsel and holding it in his mouth. You can see him here checking because he notices he needs to alert and holding his bringsel in his mouth like this. This is what's called a task, a specific action he's trained to take in response to a smell. He began scent training at just over three months for his job, and he's over two years old. In this video, he's presented with a series of samples. All are negative until the end where he's presented with a positive and gives his paw. So now that you know what tasks are, we can begin the conversation about public access rights. Service dogs, because of these tasks that they're able to help their humans with, have the right to accompany them in most public spaces. There are very few exceptions to this rule, like sterile environments in churches. Pets and emotional support animals are not afforded this same right. That means that in non-pet-friendly establishments, pets should not be brought in. The situation at the farmer's market was an example of a time that poor handling allowed pets to get too close to my service dog at a pet-friendly event. But most of the time that this happens, it's not at pet-friendly events, it's in non-pet-friendly establishments. My last service dog was attacked and lost her career at a home show. A home show that was not pet-friendly. In my state, and many like it, whether an event is pet-friendly or not, it is your responsibility as a pet owner to make sure your pet is not interfering with service dogs. So that means if you're allowing your dog to run up to a service dog and get within one or two inches of them, you are likely interfering with that service dog and could be charged. So what if you're running a non-pet-friendly event and want to make sure you're only letting service dogs in? Well, you're in luck because the Americans with Disabilities Act allows you two questions to ask. You can ask, one, is that a service dog required because of a disability? Note that that's not asking what the disability is, just asking if the dog is required because of a disability. And two, what work or task has the dog been individually trained to perform to mitigate a disability? So, for example, my answer would be, Yes, this is a service dog required because of a disability, and he is trained to pick up his bringsel to alert me to a medical episode. Note that under the Americans with Disabilities Act, emotional support is not a task because it is not a trained action that the dog is trained to take in response to a specific stimuli. There are tasks that dogs can be trained to perform for psychiatric needs, and those are typically referred to as psychiatric service dogs not emotional support dogs. Emotional support dogs do have protections in housing, but not in public access. As a business owner, you also have the right to ask a service dog team to leave if the animal is out of control and the handler does not take effective action to control them, or if they are not housebroken. Keep in mind that service dogs aren't robots and they might make mistakes, but what they won't do is be aggressive, bite people, or do anything that would put the public in danger. There is no ID, certification, or registration in the United States for service dogs or emotional support dogs. And because of that, it is unlawful for a business to require documentation of any kind as a condition for entry. The Americans with Disabilities Act protects handlers in any place that is open to the public. Keep in mind that the Air Carrier Access Act takes over for airports after security. And they have slightly different regulations. The Fair Housing Act takes over when you're talking about housing. And the Fair Housing Act does protect emotional support animals in housing. Here are three things about service dogs a lot of people don't know. Tattoo shops, while they use sterile equipment, are not considered sterile environments and must allow service dogs. My service dog has attended my tattoos twice and family members twice. Service dogs are often desensitized to all kinds of different gear. Sometimes they even wear eye protection. If you see something you don't recognize on a service dog, instead of leaving a hate comment, ask why it's there. For example, in extremely crowded environments like this, where we knew we were at an arcade on a Saturday night, I put his rec specs on him. It kept people from accidentally bumping his eyes in the crowd. Did you know that service dogs can actually go on amusement park rides that don't have height requirements? My last service dog, Mazikeen, went to Universal Studios with me and rode many of the rides. The rides they can't go on typically have crates at the entrance or exit so that you can leave your service dog there while you ride and collect them when you get off.